This is your Captain Panic speaking again. And welcome to another Touch Designer tutorial. I hope you took a seat and will enjoy, it. enjoy the ride. Um, in the background you can already see what we are going to do today. Um, or in case you are not seeing it yet, because you can only see stage one of the filter I created, which I will show in this tutorial. So basically I made an image or video filter, which has some evolution states, I think. So the first one is this kind of checkerboard displacement, which already is kind of cool. But when you just play it, it turns into this kind of rasterized um, circle pattern which also is kind of cool and when you let it run for a while it will just turn into some kind of spikes and turns the image to a very aggressive spiky image um, so let's Let's change the the image we have and hit one and see our stages again. And now we are turning to slight uh, spiky spike spike. Cool. Um, and let's change our image again. And let's see how we can change this pattern too. So we could easily easily make the dots or the grid smaller and let it play and then we have a very small pattern or rasterize thingy <laughs> or we could make it bigger and have this kind of big grid effect which is also pretty cool and when we let it run now we are turning to another very different pattern. So this filter I created has different effects um, which are different or which vary however you use the filter. So the bigger our checkerboard is, the longer it takes to turn into spikes or circles. Right here we can see some some fragments of circles um, in this image. We can't see any circles. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think it's a kind of cool um, filter or it's kind of fun to use, especially for still images um, because the detail is the most interesting thing. So when I view it in the actual size we're using here, we get a lot of very, very interesting details. Um, yeah. So I will show this network in my tutorial. It's actually pretty simple, um, but still cool. So see you on my screen. All right, welcome on my screen. Um, in the background, you can see I loaded up my custom stub startup file which I showed in my latest tutorial so um, in case you want to check that out please check it out <laughs> um, all right so let's get started um, the first thing we will need is a ramp so I will just copy my ramp from my startup file if you don't have it just create a ramp like this and then I'm using this resolution so if you want to follow along this tutorial correctly just use the same resolution just type it in and also I'm using the pixel format 32-bit float all right then I will connect this to a null which I make visible in the background. And 
then uh, we'll make some changes in that ramp. So the first thing we want to do is just kinda in the middle of this ramp we make a white point and the right one we will make black. So we have this um, kind of ramp um, and then on the interpolate notches from linear which make this this gradient we change it to step because I just want a black and a white and just make sure this is kinda in the middle it's not that important that it's in the middle but it should kinda be in the middle <laughs> alright and then I will animate the face here by just typing in apps time dot seconds multiplied with null point one so it's moving slowly and another thing I will change is the period to null point null two so we have this stripey pattern all right then I will make a noise after this and connect both outputs to it and then under the comment tab just make the pixel format 32-bit float and under the output just change the RGB to noise only and then under the noise tab let's make some changes like I don't want any harmonics, so harmonics null, period 2. And then the amplitude I will set to null point null 9 and the offset to null. So we can hardly see anything basically. <laughs> um, Alright, perfect. Then I will give us some more space and out of our first ramp we are going to create a flip. In that flip, we just flop on the bottom left. So it just gets flipped from um, vertical to horizontal. And then I will make a comp. And I will bring in our ramp here in the comp. And I will set the operation mode from this comp to difference. So basically we are getting a checkup board. Um, you could also use the checker from the generators, I think. But I kind of like to create this by myself. And then I'm just dragging this into the second input of the noise. Cool give us some more space again and now let's continue by creating a UV map because we are using UV remapping of the image we are going to use later to displace our image so first of all we will need a UV map so to create this I'm going to copy my ramp here again paste it down here once again just create a ramp and make sure you use the same settings that I use when you don't have my default startup file. Um, okay, so this ramp I will flip, so I'm creating a flip after it. And once again, bottom left flop here. And out of the first ramp, we are heading into a reorder where we will drag our flip into the second input and since we want a UV map which only consists out of red and green we need to set an output of the blue to zero and then we need to bring in our second input here and just change the output of the green to input 2 
and then we have a UV map. So this UV map describes how texture or images are distributed on or inside of a space, um, which is in this case our image, which is placed on a rectangle. Okay, so now that we created this, we need to combine those two, our noise and our reorder, which we will do by simply creating a composite. So after the noise, make a comp, bring the read order into, and then change the operation mode to difference again. So and this is what our map will look like. And then we will make a feedback loop, which will cause our effect to happen. And our feedback loop, for our feedback loop, we will create another comp where we will set the operation mode to over. Just like this and then in here, make a feedback, drag it on here. And then out of the comp, make a level. In that level, we will change the opacity to null point null null one. Drag it in here and make sure the level is above the feedback. Okay. Then after the comp, create a displace. And make this displace the target layer of the feedback. And then change the displace weight from 1 to null point null null 2. So really go soft with this displacement value here. And then we just need our displace image where we are going to use this feedback. So just create a select, drag this feedback in the select. So we are going to use this down here. It keeps everything a little bit more clean. And then after the select, I'm going to insert a slope which I will keep on default, like every parameter stays like it is. And then I will make a blur. That blur has the filter size of 20. And then I will connect it to the displays. And now in order to see what we just did, we need to reset our, our feedback here. Um, so to make that more easy, bring in a keyboard in job, make it above the feedback, make the viewer active and export the key on the pulse. So now whenever I hit one, I can reset our checkerboard so the effect happens. And now you can already see the effect that happens. So we have our checkerboard, which turns into circles, which will turn into spikes or slices or however you like to call it. Okay, cool. So how do we get this onto an image now? Um, this is easy. So first of all, we need to bring in an image, right? So just make a movie file in and then we just need a fit. And once again, I have a fit in my startup file already, which I will just copy and connect this one. And on this fit, I already have my resolution set up, um, just like on my ramp or everything before. So when you bring in a fit top, just type in the same resolution again and change the pixel format. And then after this, just bring in a remap connect the remap to our output so we can see what's going on 
And then we are going to use this displays as the second input. And now you can see there are our spikes. Um, yeah, and that also I will change the extent from zero to mirror or repeat because right now you can't see it. But when you have an image that doesn't have any transparency, you might get some transparent edges. So let's change this now. Let's bring in this kind of cool thing also. Uh, if you don't want this um, transparent spaces to happen, just change the fit mode from fit best to fit outside. And voila! Now we have our circles happening on our image. Now we are turning to spikes. Um, to keep the edges a little bit more clean, you could bring in a blur after this displays. It just smooths everything out a little bit. Um, however you want to have it. So, yeah. Um, as you can see, we reached the end. Um, we created the filter. Now, if you want to be able to change the size of our circles, just feel free to play around with this period here and see what happens to your image. Um, also, I need to mention this effect looks best when it has a kind of big resolution. Um, the best would be the biggest resolution possible because um, like when we put this down again, wait a little bit, and then when we hit right here in view, we can see it in the resolution we are actually using. And then we get some more details than we actually see here. So we'll let it play a little bit. View again. Nice details. Not so nice details here. <laughs> so it really lives in the in the detail. Um, yeah. So feel free to play around with this. Um, I think there's some cool possibilities in here, maybe. <laughs> Let us see what happens when we turn the ramp to a radial. All right. Also kind of kind of cool, I think. <laughs> maybe circular, what happens here? OK, nothing happens here. Um, maybe that's because I need to change this. Oh, yeah. Also kind of cool image effect. Um, so yeah, um, please play around with this. Um, it really gives some cool options. And please tag me in your results because I want to see them. <laughs> and yeah, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had some fun. <laughs> and I hope you're staying creative. So stay healthy and most important stay kind and see you next time bye bye